Thank you. Uh, my name is Siva Balan. I work at GE Digital as a performance engineer. And uh, I'm here to talk about, in five minutes, uh, just to give you a brief overview of how we do performance engineering and uh, how uh, it, what tools we use uh, and what kind of tests we do and uh, some of the uh, interesting findings that we got as part of doing performance engineering on Cloud Foundry, uh, which is very different from what you do from uh, for uh, um, on-prem uh, applications and not cloud-based applications. Um, so one of the, some of the tools and techniques that we use, uh, first with two uh, type of tests that we do, um, capacity tests, uh, scalability, endurance, stress, and chaos monkey. So we try and implement chaos monkey tests, which uh, some, some of you might know that uh, uh, in Netflix it started with uh, their uh, uh, Amazon um, uh, EC2 instances uh, bringing down at random times in production. Uh, but um, as part of capacity tests, we try to uh, uh, first make sure the uh, the service that's deployed to Cloud Foundry is uh, well tuned for uh, the type of load that you'd expect on, a, on one instance. And then we start doing uh, the scalability test with, uh, by scaling out to multiple instances by 10, 50, or 100 instances as well. And uh, the endurance test is primarily to detect uh, resource leaks, failures, um, uh, memory leaks, uh, CPU, uh, uh, utilization that goes haywire uh, in, in some instances. So, you, uh, and, and stress test is to basically find out when, how your application or service is able to recover itself after uh, you've exhausted all the resources. Uh, and Chaos Monkey, of course, is to uh, randomly pull down instances, and we try to stop and start instances at random times to make sure that it's able to um, uh, detect failures, and it's also able to recover uh, gracefully. Um, and uh, the, to some of the tools that we use is uh, JMeter for uh, for load uh, generation itself. Um, uh, APM tools uh, like we use Neuralic, uh, App, uh, App Dynamics, or Dynatrace that we just just saw, uh, saw a few minutes earlier. And um, uh, Jam, uh, Jalokia for JMX. And then this is uh, slightly um, uh, different from what typically people use for getting JMX, uh, and I'll tell you why. And ELK is to persist uh, the actual load itself. I'm sorry, the, the data that comes back from JMeter. Um, and how we do it, so this gives you a, a very brief representation of our, uh, our performance test framework. Um, as you can see, uh, the code gets checked out from GitHub, uh, and uh, the, the, the code gets pushed, it, it gets built, it gets pushed out to Cloud Foundry, uh, we scale the number of instances, and uh, there is a monitoring hooked up from Neuralic, um, or AppDynamics, or in this case we use Neuralic, but you can use AppDynamics or Dynatrace, or any other uh, APM tools that, that's uh, part of your organization. Um, we use Jalokia primarily because um, for security reasons, uh, the Docker SSH is uh, shut off in our, in our organization. So we had to have some kind of a HTTP wrapper on top of JMX for us to get the JMX metrics. So Jalokia helps us really well there. And as you can see, the output of JMeter gets pushed into uh, RabbitMQ and that gets uh, a log stash of subscriber which uh, persists the data for us in the Elasticsearch, and we use Kibana for visualization of the da data. And this is how it looks. Our dashboard, a typical dashboard looks like this for us, where we have data coming in from JMeter, coming in from Jalokia, coming in from uh, JMX uh, for us to get uh, a visualization of uh, a good representation of what, what the service looks like. In this case, this is a UA service that we use in our organization. Um, how different is troubleshooting in uh, Cloud Foundry? So we found some uh, lessons learned which I thought I could share. Uh, we didn't have uh, access to RMI ports, so we couldn't use JConsole. So we had to use Jalokia to get JMX monitoring up and running. Um, JVM crashes, crashes the container. It actually doesn't uh, um, uh, let you get any data out of your uh, container once it crashes. So uh, we had to rely on application logs uh, that are stored in Elasticsearch. It gives us a little bit of data, but not a whole lot of data, unfortunately, uh, because once the JVM is crashed, it's, it's gone forever. Um, uh, traditional tools like JVisual VM and JProfiler don't work for your troubleshoot issues. So we end up uh, relying on uh, APM tools like Neuralic, AppDynamics, or Dynatrace for us to give us as much information as possible before the container crashes. Um, and uh, it's some of the uh, exceptions that gets thrown right before crashes get logged into these APM tools, and it can help you a little bit to understand where the problem is. Um, and uh, uh, finally, I would like to end with the industry finding that we came up with. Um, so there was a Spring Boot app uh, that was constantly crashing every two hours. We couldn't find any leaks in our Java code. There were no full GC uh, observed before the crash. And 
the problem with that was that it was using a lot more native memory than what we had given it. Uh, uh, and, um, and we had to previously use the memory limit variable, but now we don't use it anymore. Uh, we can use the Java build pack 4.x, which actually uh, gives you a different memory segments on how you can size the different memory segments. I'm 15 minutes, 15 seconds over. I will end really quick. Uh, and, and the other one was actually um, the monitoring agent itself was causing memory leak for us. So we had to go and uh, uh, unbind it and try to test again. Uh, but then the key takeaways, um, start early, go deep, uh, use a good monitoring tool, don't fly blind, and enable the developers and give access to the uh, reports for them. Uh, if you have more questions, uh, come to our booth, Predix booth at uh, Predix, uh, I mean, uh, in, in, the, in the Foundry, and you can reach me uh, at, uh, uh, at this Twitter handle or at my Gmail, uh, email address. Thank you very much.